morning, everybody. It's Sunday. This is B from Kongs R Us, and uh, today I am in my garage in a workshop uh, to go over a demo of drilling into several Star Wars control panels uh, that I've been working on for some clients. So I will be drilling hundreds of holes uh, in the next couple of days. And so over the last couple of months, I've had tons of experience with all different sorts of drill bits, different tools. So I thought I'd do a stream to just showcase a little bit about my techniques for drilling into control panels as well as plexiglass. Um, and again, these are just my, my personal tips that I've done over the last couple of months that I've learned. I'm still getting better and learning as well, but I feel like I've gotten into a pretty decent groove. Um, so I'll show you an example panel of uh, one that I completed last night using these tools and everything. I know the lighting is pretty bad with the with the back. But maybe I'll close the garage door. Is the lighting pretty bad? It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty bad. <laughs> so maybe maybe if I turn off this light, we'll see. All right, cool. Um, but here's the sample control panel that I drilled yesterday through um, the using the drill press. But you can see I, I mark off all my holes and I'm drilling using the drill press. And you can see how clean these holes are. I'm actually drilling through the plexiglass and the board at the same time um so yeah i just wanted to showcase some of the some of the, the good good techniques that i've learned what's up chris thanks for joining man i think this is your board oh wait no 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 your board's over here chris so i worked on your board yesterday um uh, yeah i'll be doing just some some tips and demos of, of everything that's happening so feel free to drop any questions that you have into the chat um I'll be, i have this posted on not only my youtube but a couple of the facebook groups that i've used um but for a lot of the the newer folks that might be newer to modding um, you know, these are the normal tools that you would have in your arsenal, right? So just a regular power drill um, is, is, is should be in every person's arsenal in their, in their modding toolkit. And uh, I was sort of like everybody else when, when I first started modding my Street Fighter cab, I think in January this year is when I started. I followed uh, ETA Prime's uh, tutorial video that most everybody recommends as the first kind of go-to video on how to mod. And, and he recommended this step bit. And this was my, you know, I, I trusted the, you know, the, the YouTube review and, and, and used this step bit to, to go through my control panel and my, um, my plexiglass originally. But this was, um, this was a little bit scary to use. I mean, actually going through the control panel and the MDF was no problem with the step bit. But where I had issues with was using this with the plexiglass and so when i wanted to make extra holes and had to drill through plexiglass i mean i've cracked my fair share of plexiglass using a step bit so um in terms of my quick review of using a step bit i think it's great for for beginners to use to go through mdf and when you need to kind of make some quick um holes and adjustment where you need to use like a power drill um, but i would not recommend a step bit through plexiglass it's definitely um a little bit more uh, prone to, to break and snag as you get to the next level. Um, and it, you probably could go slow and maybe I wasn't using it correctly, but my experience using a step bit with plexiglass was a little bit scary. Uh, and I've cracked a couple of different um, plexiglasses using this. Um, and then I, I kind of moved up to using a hole saw. And so this is a one and one eighth inch hole saw that you can get. And uh, you know they sell these in, in packs and bits and things too, but this is a Lennox brand hole saw that I got from, from Lowe's. And it's, it's pretty awesome. I, this was my go-to bit for a long time. And, uh, and and I can do a demo of this, but you know, going through using this drills through MDF fairly well. And then you can also drill through plexiglass as well. But since the teeth are very sharp, um, you know, some folks always recommend it going backwards. And I, you know, that's what I still kind of do just in case, but you, as long as you um, have two things when you're drilling through plexiglass and you're using a hole saw like this, you have to make sure there's a board underneath whatever you're drilling into. So if, you, if you're using the plexiglass and you're moving it separately and you're drilling them separately, you can't just drill like plexiglass, um, you know, just freeform because that's that's the having that the, the support on the back is, is really what makes you um, be able to to drill through the plexi cleanly using the um, the hole saw. So uh, make sure you have a board behind when you're using it. Uh, and then normally, and I actually removed it. Um, there's an arbor in the hole saw as well, too. So depending on the ones that you get, there's an arbor, which is just, you know, a small drill bit in the middle. And this helps align where you're drilling at. Uh, and so sometimes you can make a, uh, you know, just take a regular drill or this one and kind of take a pilot hole into your board and your plexi before you go this. And this will help you get lined up exactly. So this is an example of like, you know, a board that I used to use where I lined up 
um, you know, just a singular place. And then I would drill down and then I would kind of catch the board on the bottom side. So this was my, you know, throwaway board that I would have underneath the plexi and then I would drill through and this makes sure it protects the bottom side of everything too. Um, so hole saws are really good. Um, the only downside of this is that um, since the wood that you're burning, the MDF is a half inch thick, uh, it does it does burn a little bit once you start going down to you know the middle portions of it uh the the mdf bits and stuff kind of get stuck in the teeth of your hole saw um so you do constantly have to kind of take it out brush it off i used to have like um like a little metal brush here that i would brush it because otherwise if you leave the mdf uh, in there and you're drilling it, you could start burning the the mdf you know start to see it get a little bit black um, Bobby Vu, one of my, my good pals, kind of taught me how to use a hole saw properly. And so once you are, are drilling, one of the techniques, if you do have a hole saw, um, is to drill halfway through the board. And then once you get halfway through, um, and the arbor actually goes through the backside already because it's already halfway through, um, then you can turn it around to the backside and then, and then finish it off on the back. And then that way you'll have not, you won't blow out the backside of it. Um, you'll be able to drill properly through the front side and the back side without blowing out your board. Uh, what do I mean by blowout? So um, I don't know if I have a sample board here, but you know, so the, so the back side of these panels, um, here's a completed one here. This back side is, uh, you know, we drill through and, and even the back side of the, the, the MDF and the melanine is, is still very clean. So a blowout is when, if you don't have the bottom side and you're drilling through, and then this part could crack and you can have tons of, you know, this part peeling everywhere. Um, but I was using a, a new tool in my, in my drill press to make these really clean holes. But if you have a, a, a power saw or a power drill and a hole saw still works really well, um, but that's just one of the things you have to consider is that you do have to drill through the front, through the back. This is, this is Bobby Vu, Master Modern Bobby Vu's go-to is, uh, is the one and one eighth inch hole saw. Uh, but my, my main new love of, of bits is using a Forstner bit. And so this is something that, you know, I guess, more, more folks that are familiar with woodworking and, and cutting through you know, holes in, in MDF uh, recommended this to me. And I can't say enough about how much I love using Forstner bits now. And so this type of bit is, it's, you know, has the teeth here and has a little bit of a, of a point. Hey, what's going on? There's some folks on Facebook. Um, let, me, let me make sure I get my Facebook group open because I can't see exactly who's chatting unless you um, let StreamYard say that you can go. So if you are on Facebook, uh, just let StreamYard give you permission, or I can, um, let me just get my Facebook group open really fast so I can see the wizards. What's going on, wizards? Um, so here, so this is a Forstner bit. So yeah, when this drills through, I can drill through both the plexi and the board at the same time using a Forstner bit. And so uh, this has been my go-to, and, and now I've, I've like, you know upgraded from using my hand drill. I, I would drill literally hundreds of holes using my power drill, and then my bit, and then what I'd have to do is, you know, as I, as I got tired and I ran out of batteries, I had my spare battery charging right here, and I would be constantly swapping these two, uh, you know, taking a break. My drill would get super hot too, so the 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 bit is uh, super hot to to go through, and um, so yeah, I would even have to cool this down, and then even my bits would get so hot, I I would have a bucket of water next to me <laughs> just to kind of like cool down just the bit part, so I wasn't burning my wood, um, but uh, yeah, so using the, the Forstner bit is, is really cool. Um, so what's up, Damon? I think I see you now. Cool. So the, um, the Forstner bit is now what I'm using. This is a one and one eighth inch hole saw as well. And so this is the size hole that you're going to want to use when you're making holes for any of your standard buttons. Um, it's about 29 millimeters. So this hole here, this hole size will fit any of your standard size buttons that you have. So this is that's the magic number. It's like 29 millimeters, 28 millimeters or a one and one eighth inch hole saw is what you want to going to use or not hole saw force no bit um so i have links in the description to all the tools that i use um again use whatever you're more comfortable with these are, are again the force no bit is, is my go-to um tool here so uh now let's talk about this beast here so this is a uh, 10 inch drill press and I, I would only recommend getting a drill press if you're going to be doing this a lot and uh, you know it is a little bit of an investment but for me it was worth it uh, this is about 175 dollars on sale um, that i got and um, i had to do two things to prep it and get it ready and so when you get the drill press let me turn on my other camera so you can see 
All right, so here is my um, my 10 inch drill press here. Um, I had to create this, this board on the bottom um, so that I can have an extra board um, because normally when it comes, it just comes with this metal plate here. So to have a board here, all I did was just take um, you know, some, some pieces of wood and then just make sure once I, I lined it up with the, the metal plate here, just made kind of some stoppers so this would fit into the grooves. This was just some spare wood. And now it sits here on top and now I'll have a little bit of a board underneath that I can, you know, once I drill through everything, uh, will catch the bottom side so I won't have any blowouts. But other than that, it has several different speeds you can use. Um, but this is really, really awesome tool to, to really um, get through a lot of holes quickly and efficiently. I was really surprised at how cleanly the, the board goes through because with this, when you're using it, the, the hole or the drill press, I can make sure I, I get to the same spot every single time when I'm drilling through. So when this board is here too, I'm, I'm pretty much moving this all the way down and it's hitting the bottom of the board exactly every single time. So there's a lot of precision that comes with using a drill press. Um, but um, yeah, let me know. I have some some folks that are in the comments. I know I have 15, 19 people. I just went over how to use, you know, the different bits that I use in my arsenal. Are, are folks seeing me interested in seeing me use kind of these these older tools and just doing a demo of, of using the whole saw step bit? Or do you guys want to see a demo of using the uh, drill press? So. Just let me know if you have any comments or things that you guys want to see. I know they have several people that are watching right now, um, but uh, hopefully this won't be too loud in just a second. So um, the other thing that I have in my workshop um, that you have to be uh, just um, aware of when you're drilling a lot through MDF is that there's tons of dust and sawdust that comes up from whatever board that you're drilling. So having a vacuum or a shop vac, I have a shop vac right here next to me. And so while I'm drilling to minimize how much dust is getting all over the place, um, I will actually be using my, my, my vacuum almost like a dentist. <laughs> while I'm working and drilling, I have the sucking shop bag right next to it. And that helps get all the extra dust particles um, and things mostly into my shop bag. And then afterwards, um, you know, I have, I have a little bit of a mess that I can clean up later, but it does save me time from cleaning up later, having everything. Uh, so Smart wants to see everything, see examples of everything. All right, so let me do a demo of using um, maybe the hole saw. So you guys can see me using the hole saw. Uh, I'm not going to do a demo of the step bit just yet, but um, let me see if I can find a board to do the step bit. Normally for, for a step bit, I would only, again, like use this through um, a control panel. Um, so I can do that really quickly just so you can see what it looks like. Um, so, um, but I can do definitely do a demo of the, the whole saw in the arbor. So the first thing with the arbor, I'll get this prepped and ready, is um, there is a little um, hex Allen key in the back there that will tighten up the arbor. So let me just make sure I find my Allen key, get that tied up. And then afterwards, I will grab some boards and panels. But let me know if you have any questions in the chat. I'm happy to answer any questions in the meantime um, for folks that are curious about seeing this. I have about, I say, seven, seven to ten more control panels to drill today. So I'll be I'll be here for a while. So after after I answer questions and and go through this and do a demo, I probably will just leave the. Um, the stream on just so people can see me work a little bit and we'll edit it out later. But I kind of went over the review of everything going on and uh, the dentist reference is rice. Yes. Uh, so I will, I will keep going as, as much as people are watching. So let me tighten down my arbor really quickly so we can get this tight. All right. So now my arbor is tight into the um, back into my hole saw. All right. Let's see. Yeah, that's not as deep as I thought it would be. Hold on. I unscrewed this yesterday, so it was my first time taking out the arbor. So a lot of times, hole saws will either come with an arbor already directly in it, like the drill, um, or it may come separately in a set and may not be included. So just double check and make sure. All right, yeah, it wasn't It wasn't all the way down. OK, so now my arbor is tied down. And then I'm going to grab my drill. And let's do a demo of using the hole saw into a section. Um, other things to, to note when you're working with plexi. So uh, if you're using a plexi board, um, and I know this camera's a little fuzzy, I'll do this. Um, so this is, a, this is a Star Wars control panel. If you plan on modding something and you know you're going to mod it from the time that you get it, leave the plastic on your plexi, the cover, on it before 
you do any of your modding. Having this layer of film on your Plexi helps protect it from cracking. Um, otherwise, you will have to do some extra taping just to make sure that it's secure um, when you're drilling. So here's an example of, um, this is just what I do. Like there, there, this is another panel that already had it removed, but I just use saran wrap to kind of cover the whole thing. And then I tape it down next to the board. Um, and so this is, this is how I, I go through these areas here. So I'm going to do just one demo of me drilling through um, one of these holes using the, the hole saw. Um, so you can see um, that once you once you go through everything, the the bits also get stuck in the hole saw, and you have to pop them out. So let's do that. Let's put one of our boards here, so you guys can see that. I know the second camera is a little bit choppy, um, but at least you can see this big camera here. Let me see if I can fix the camera on the second one. I think it might be the internet it's connected to. One second. All right, where is my? There it is. The second camera might go out for a second, but I need to disconnect and reconnect to a better Wi-Fi signal. Let's see. Properties, 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 Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. Show available networks. Um, where is my 5G network? All right, my second camera is really poor quality. Sorry, I'm also in my garage in a new hotspot area. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off really quick so I can get back into it. Sorry for this, guys. Um, I wanna see if I can do a quality stream. Disconnect. Let's take off this user for a second. And then, let's see. All right, stream. I probably should have tested this beforehand, but if not, we're, we might just have a choppy second camera. That's okay. All right, are we back? We're connected. Okay. All right. All right. So it's it's okay. It's not it's not gonna be as great. So the second camera might not be as great quality, but you can see me from here anyway. So let me know if you have any questions. All right. Cool. There's a couple of folks that are on here as well. Thanks, Jose. <laughs> All right, so we're doing drilling live on camera. So hopefully I don't crack anything on screen, but you guys can see. So we're going to do this one uh, hole right here. So I uh, already marked off where I'm going to be drilling. So always mark off. You know, it's one of those like measure twice, cut once things. Um, but here I'm going to slowly start going through. Um, and, and, and normally, you, you know, some folks don't recommend doing plexi in the board uh, directly with the hole saw. But as long as you cut through um, you know, the plexi first. I like to get through the plexi anytime I, I drill first. And then once I once I can hear um, the whole saw cutting through the plexi, I'll stop, pull back, pull out the plexi portion of it, and then drill the rest of the way. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. So I'm going to create a little bit of space. Uh, and then your drilling board or whatever you're drilling through when you're using a, a drill, I recommend kind of like a, a sawhorse or something to have kind of even pressure on both sides. Um, I Right now, I'm just kind of hanging off the edge of, of this right here. In fact, I think I'm going to um, just put the board here. That way I can have this here. I'm going to grab a clamp, clamp this down just so I have a little bit more security to this uh, when I'm drilling. Because when you're using a hole saw, you have to have the bottom of the board exposed. So when you're using a Forstner bit, you have to have a board underneath. But when you're using a hole saw and you have that arbor, you have to be able to make sure that there's a kind of an underneath space here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Have my drill here. Have this set on the number two drill side so I can get some extra power, um, but I'll do that in a second. So let's just make our pilot hole first using our arbor to go through here. All right, so hopefully this isn't too loud. So I'm going All right, so uh, I just made my pilot hole going slowly through, and then you can see some of the dust there already. So that's that's the first thing you want to do is make sure you slowly get your arbor through your plexiglass, so that way you don't want to start any cracks. So once you get to the plexi section, you know this is you know there's a couple of folks that say you just start drilling backwards. You can do either or, uh, whatever makes you feel more comfortable. I'll just do the example where I'm going to go in a backwards motion now, just so the teeth don't catch as easily. Like I've gotten comfortable enough where I can just drill moving forward, but I know this. 
this kind of helps mentally with some folks. But if you drill backwards, I'm gonna start drilling through the plexi portion only. And once I finish that, you can hear it and feel it once it's done, and then I'm gonna pull back out. So let's go ahead and drill backwards. Saw. I lost I lost my connection. I lost my connection. Alright, let's get that tight. Pull that out. So there. Okay, so now I, I drilled through my plexi portion of it. And so uh, normally once you get through and there's a there's a especially if there's an arbor, you'll have your plexi kind of stuck in there. Um so you want to pull this out before you continue drilling through the rest of the board. Otherwise, this is gonna get stuck, uh, and then you're gonna be pressing this up into the hole saw while you're drilling down. So you can see I have a pretty clean cut here. This is where I would use normally, hopefully this isn't too loud. Just cleaning out the area section. I have no cracks in my plexi in it at all. Um, so this was just a nice clean cut on the plexi side of things. Um, and then I'm gonna drill the rest of it through. So again, for the hole saw, I'm gonna go halfway through. And once I get halfway, I'm gonna flip it over and then do the backside so I don't have to blow out. So now that I have this here and I've done through my plexi, I'm gonna go back to the number two slot and then start drilling through. So this one does require having some pressure. So I do have to press down pretty hard uh, to get through this section here. All right, if you can tilt the second camera down a lot to see you drilling. All right, let's see if I can do that. Thanks, Chris. Let me tilt the second camera down. All right. There. There it is. Is that better? Hopefully that's better. Okay, so let me tilt down so you can see this drilling right here. So now I'm going to drill forward on this section through the MDF. And if you have a sharp hole saw, this will go through pretty quickly. All right, so I already feel it kind of going halfway, um, which is you know where I want to get to. And if you and if you can see. Um, See my, my hole saw? It already has the bits of MDF kind of stuck inside of the hole saw. So I uh, cleaned this off with a brush. Um, it's already hot on my hands, so I wouldn't use this with your hands, but pulling it out, cleaning it, you can already smell a little bit of the burn of the MDF going through this because there's no circulation for it to kind of get clean. Um, so that's, that's going through one side, and then we're gonna flip it over um, to go to the other side could just keep going through slowly, but you know, if you want to protect the backside of your board um, where it doesn't have that blowout, uh, this is this is the best method that, that I recommend and, and that this is this is how Bobby Boo taught me how to drill. So he gave me some, some nice tips and tricks. I've learned a lot from him. Um, so when he was he was showing me how to do uh, you know his drilling techniques, this is what he showed me as well. So I I, I have the I have this um, blue tape here, so you can't see it, but let me just take this off. So you can see, once I've drilled through the back, you can already start seeing the, the pilot hole that came through from the arbor. Um, so there's a little bit of a blow up, but we're gonna be cutting around it anyways, so that's fine. So now I just, let me make sure I clamp down my board one more time just to have a little bit of security. All right, so that's clamped down. Now I'm gonna drill through this back side of the hole and this do the same thing from here. I'm making the, the whole cut, and so that's really nice and smooth. And as long as you go slow enough, you should be able to either just drill through the rest of this, or if you're worried about the front art breaking, um, then you can go back to the back side and flip it through. So it kind of depends on how you're feeling and comfortable. But I'm just gonna drill again halfway through before I get started. So my board is starting to burn. I can see some smoke. Ooh, that hole saw is burning. That's the smell of burning wood or MDF, right? It smells good. All right, so we're pretty much almost through. I'm just gonna go a little bit slowly. And once you're through, that's it. So now I have that MDF part that's stuck right there. So that is, um, you know, you can save these, do whatever you want with them. But now our whole saw is nice and clean. And you can see there's MDF everywhere. There's sawdust everywhere. So let's drill this out. Okay. 
So now you can see I have a really nice clean cut hole and this was using the one and one eighth inch hole saw. So very clean on the front, very clean on the back side. Um, so if, if you have a, a quick job and you want to get through both your plexi and your board at the same time, I still would recommend using the hole saw. I like it a lot for quick jobs if I need to do like a single single thing. Um, but if once I once I start doing repetitive stuff, the, the Forstner bit is really cool to use because you can see um, you don't have to, to keep flipping it like I was doing it, right? Where you have to do one side and flip it around. With the Forstner bit, you can just go down in one shot um, and it saves a little bit of time. But the hole saw, that's, that's how you get through this. So hopefully that was kind of a cool demo to see that. Um, let me do an example of using the drill, the drill bit and the Forstner bit so you can see how to do that. What's up, Endangered Dog? What's going on, man? Thanks for joining and, and you know checking out and supporting the streams. Appreciate you. All right, so I'm going to take out. I, I've, I, the only thing with the force bit or any bit that you use is that eventually the teeth and the sharpness of it wears down. So I have an older hole saw or force bit that I was using, um, but the teeth on this are, are a little bit dull now because I was drilling so many holes. Um, but um, so this one I bought uh, a newer one and it works way better when I'm using it on new boards. So you definitely just have to check the dullness of your boards. Um, but let me let me try using this old one, see if it still works again. So this is the same um, size as the hole saw, the one and one eighth inch hole saw. So all right. So this is now in, and I'm going to drill one more hole into the same board using the force in a bit. And you'll see the difference of how I can just go through the board really easily instead of having to flip flop them around. So let me get this board on it's right here. Okay. So I'm going to leave this here. Let me clamp everything down. So it's always nice to have clamps if you have them, so you can secure things down. Um, it you know it doesn't not a necessity, but it definitely will help so you don't move your board when you're drilling. So I definitely recommend having clamps if you have them. All right. So there we go. So now my board is secure onto the board. So now I'm going to use my Forstner bit and I'm going to drill down into this hole and you can see the even pressure that I'm going to use to drill through both the plexi and this at the same time um, and see how fast we can get it done. All right, cool. So this is again using a Forstner bit instead of the whole saw that we just used. And I hope this demo works, otherwise I'm gonna be like, I, I blew up this Forstner bit, but I'm not using it well. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move this down so I have better leverage. Because uh, normally you wanna be, this is really high in terms of like a drilling table. Like you shouldn't be drilling at something that's at this chest, you should be drilling something that's a little bit more on the ground, but um, I just want to move this down so you guys have a better angle. And I could probably even just do it on this board right here, um, but hopefully you guys can still see that. Okay. All right, cool. All right, so that's there. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is our, this is our Forstner bit going through a hole here. So this is a test. And make sure, again, you have to have a, a, a board underneath your board, um, and the, underneath your um, control panel when you're doing it. So here we go. Forstner bit. I kind of stop once I get past the plexi just to double check my bit to see if there's nothing that's stuck there. Um, I kind of replaced my battery because it's actually already out. So nothing worse than drilling in the middle of what you're working on than having your battery die on you. So good thing I always have a spare charged and ready to go. And again, this is a little bit harder to keep clean. Um, and, and you know, with, with both the Forstner bit and the hole saw, you're kind of melting the plastic. So you might get some of this melted edge there, but it just kind of picks off. Let me go ahead and clean that off really fast. All right. So once you get through your plastic or your plexi and everything's good, then you can just go through the rest of the board and watch how easy the rest of this board just kind of comes up right here. So we're going to go through the rest of the MDF now.
All right, let's clean this up. Nothing like sawdust all over you. So the fourth circuit is pretty much drilling through the MDF and then like just using this, these sections to just have all the bits fly out of it. So it definitely is dustier using the Forstner bit than having this nice little clean cut afterwards. But let's take a look at our Forstner bit and see how we did. Oh, I actually didn't finish the last part of it. Let me just finish that last part really fast. All right. All right, there it is, perfect. Perfecto. So there it is. So that's using a Forstner bit. And you can see, look at that hole. The hole there is also very clean on the back. We went all the way through, no blowouts in the backside. And you can see it was easier than having to have me flip the board over twice when I was using the hole saw. So the Forstner bit, again, I can just leave it on the board. It does make a little kind of indent on your board on the backside. So make sure you have kind of like a throwaway board that you're going to use because you want to be able to make sure it drills all the way through um, and it might just cut like a little hole on your board um, but that's using the um, the hole saw so this was the or sorry this is the forcer bit that i use on this side and this is the hole saw that i use on this side but very very smooth on the inside very even application um the other thing and i'm not going to use the step bit because i don't want to ruin these boards <laughs> using a step bit but for the step bit if you get through and you're, and you're putting this through the hole so once you get halfway through to the right size, like this is where I need to get to on using the step bit. But then since it's kind of sloped, I also have to drill the backside until it gets even. So you won't get as clean of a cut on the inside using a step bit because you have to drill from both sides and you have to kind of like eyeball it. And, um, you know, it does have the marker here for 28 or 30 millimeters here, but this is a 29 millimeter hole. So this actually doesn't even fit directly into one of these because it's a 28 millimeter hole. So that was a sample of using you know, your power drill, good old, good old power drill with a Forstner bit and a hole saw. So hopefully that was cool. Um, but now I want to demo using this guy. So this guy is, um, you know, it was, this was my birthday present <laughs> from, from my wife. So thank you so much. Instead of getting an NBA jam um, cabinet for my birthday, which she said she was going to get, I was like, let's, can you, can I get a, can I get a drill press instead? <laughs> and she was like, sure. It was half the price and way more functional. So if you're going to be making an investment, um, again, I, I don't recommend this for, for a ton of folks, but it's nice to have in your arsenal. It makes uh, drilling through tons of boards way easier. So I've gotten pretty comfortable using this. I, I did a, a short session last night to test it, but I want to show you guys how I get this done too. So let me let me measure how far I was going again. So what if, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm measuring how far um, you know, the drill bit goes down with my board. And that way I can make sure that I get to an even, even space every time. So let's make sure it goes there. Okay. Perfect. That's what I want. Here. All right. So now that that's good, I'll leave this in that spot. This is going to drill down to the same spot every single time. I'm going to have to drop it a little bit. Okay. All right. So that's where I want it. And when I go down, it's going to stop at that same spot every single time. Okay. So let's do a, de a demo of the drill press. So again, with everything, um, I do recommend having safety goggles on while you're gill drilling. I have glasses, so they kind of work as my safety goggles. And um, I had a mask here that I wasn't using earlier. I probably should have. Um, but, you know, put on your mask, put on your gloves. Uh, make sure you get all your protection going on. For me, when I'm using my drill press, I like to have some work gloves on. So I'll turn on some work gloves. Put on the mask, and then I'm gonna use the um, the the shop vac at the same time when I'm using this too as well. So it just kind of helps keep things a little bit clean, but it might be a little bit loud on the stream. So apologies. Okay, so let's get our mask on. Okay. All right, so we're gonna drill a hole here. 
So just measure, and then again, I have my clamps just to help me out with measuring. So this is going to clamp down. I'm going to measure where my hole is going to go down first. I've marked everything off already. All right, so once I know where it's going to go, I flip this on. We're ready to roll. So here you go. So just like I was doing before, I always stop after I cut through the plexi. You can see I already have some, you know, the, the extra plexi bits that are, you know, being somewhat melted from the force there bit. Um, so if you can pry it off and, and push it to the side a little bit, it definitely helps to clear out some of the debris before you go down to the rest of it. Uh, this wasn't a clean cut. Once it gets a little bit hotter, this cleans up a little bit easier, and it's easier to kind of like pry and pick away. So here it goes. I'm just picking away some of the extra plexi. You'll see me as I demo some of the other ones. Normally, it doesn't, it doesn't get this messy in between each one, um, but I wanted to just demo me stopping right when I get to the plexi. So make sure you do that first. Sometimes the bits of plexi can get caught in your Forstner bit right here. Um, so that's why you want to pull that off anytime you go through. If you're drilling through plexi and the board at the same time, always stop after you get through the plexi just to double check that the plexi is good. <laughs> Here's a sample of the board using the Forstner bit, but with the drill press. So you can see exactly like the other ones, very clean hole. Um, you can see that you know it gets through it's super smooth, no blowouts as well, since I measured everything through. Plexi is very clean. There's no cuts as well. Um, so again, these are just some of the tools of the trade that I use. But that's kind of the, the biggest demo that I wanted to showcase. Um, so let me see if I can answer any questions. I'll probably end the stream completely, um, you know, on my YouTube after this. But otherwise, I'll keep this going so in case anybody else has any questions. So any last questions for anybody? All right. All right. What's up, Gene? What's going on? I need to buy wood bits now. All my stuff is for metal. Yeah, that's another thing too. All right, cool. So uh, again, thank you guys for joining. Um, I will be happy to, to hang out. I'm going to keep drilling through these boards, but in terms of the demo portion, um, I appreciate it. So uh, if you guys like and enjoy this content, please consider subscribing and you know supporting. I, I think in one week, I've, I've gotten tons of support. So I appreciate it and hope you guys like these live streams and things. But I'll, I'll edit and cut this out at this point. And um, thanks. I'll hang out. Feel free to keep watching, ask any questions, but I'm just going to keep streaming and, um, and drill the rest of this board. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll, I'll monitor your chat once in a while to see if anything's going on. Cool. Thanks, guys. Might turn on some music. Just keep working the rest of the day. I have a lot of boards to drill. Lots and lots and lots of stuff. Look over here. These, these are all my boards that I have to drill right here. So I'm just going to be working the rest of the day. But feel free to hang out if you want. I'll just leave this on in case you guys have any questions. All right. I'm going to turn on my YouTube music. Go there. But the demo is officially done in case, in case you guys are want to head out. Uh, Chris, is, are there any brands you wouldn't recommend? You know, um, since I, you know, you only try to buy things once and not try to buy too many different things going on. Uh, but this is a, a skill drill press. I did a couple of research pieces and you know just trusted that this was one of the better mid-tier builds. Um, the only thing I would recommend, since if you're going to be drilling a control panel, this is a 10-inch 
uh, uh, or drilling press that gives you more space here. So like you see the angle that's here. Um, so if, if you, I know there's eight inch drill presses that might give you some issues getting to places on a control panel. So, you know, a 10 inch drill press is something I would recommend. Um, and then in terms of the bits itself, like, yeah, I don't have a ton of recommendations. This is an Irwin Forster bit, I think, that I've, that I've used pretty well. Um, in my experience, you see that I, I did have to buy two um, because this one wore out after, you know, heavy use. But I think every drill bit would do that once in a while. Um, spade bits. Um, I'm not sure about spade bits. I haven't used them before, but I assume that's the one with that's a little bit flat. And then it has the two teeth on the, on the side edges. Uh, I can only give you kind of my recommendations on, on the, you know, the three most popular tools that I've used. And I haven't tested a spade bit. And, you know, knowing knowing that I have a ton of boards to work on, I probably won't be testing it. But I, may, I might test it out on some spare wood just to, for science. The next time I go to Lowe's, I'll pick up a spade bit and test it out just to, to, to note. So if you come on a future stream and I do this again, I'll, I will definitely let you know about speed bits, but those are just the brands that I've used and what I recommend. Um, and I have links to in the description to some of the tools, the exact tools that I've used for this. Um, so feel free to check those out so you can see, perhaps take a look. This is the other cool tool that's in my arsenal right now too. Um, I did not have one of these before. Let me pull this out without breaking the, without breaking the camera. This, this little handy $30. I didn't know that I didn't pay $30 for this. Maybe it was like 50 bucks. This is a router. So uh, if I was, this is great for making circular holes, but when uh, I, I've been installing these giant Suzel Hap teeth throttles, and then I needed to make a square plate that was like this. I should have pulled this out. I can't grip anything with my gloves. All right, so I needed to make a, a square cutout for the Suzel Hap throttle. So in order to do that, uh, you know, I measured my hole, um, you know, did a regular circular hole through the drill. And to get that square area, I used my router to kind of get the rest of it in a clean space. So you can do a lot of things with the router, too. Uh, I know more experienced folks also do uh, the slot molding for, for the T-molding. So you can get a slot bit cutter and cut the sides. So you can add T-molding into your wood panels or, or if your big panels. Um, I'm not that advanced yet. I'm not the best woodworker. Uh, so I'm only just demoing what I've used and, and what maybe some beginner to intermediate folks may be doing in terms of drilling into your RK one up uh, control panel. So hopefully this is a little bit helpful, but you know, there's many, many fancier woodworking tools that are out there that you could use. Um, but this is just some of the tools that I have in my box. All right, I'm going to get working. So let me know if you guys have any more questions in chat. Feel free to hang out. Thanks again for watching guys. Appreciate it. my music there's my music i installed a tv in my garage so i can play some music now Let's do the work all right let's see Let's do some post alone chill
Are you selling these modded cabinets? I may have missed why you have that stack of control decks queued up off camera. Um, <laughs> hey, yeah, I do actually take on commissions to have people send me their panels to, to mod for them and, and modify their yoke and ship it back to them. So that is a something that I've been doing for a little while. So if you're interested, you can uh, message me. Uh, you can email me at kongzarust.arcade at gmail.com um, or check out my uh, Starcade playlist demo um, where I have a Facebook user group for folks that are interested in my commission. So I'll leave a link in the description in case people are interested in that as well. Um, I've stopped taking commissions since August because I've just gotten so busy. So a lot of these uh, panels have been piling up since two months ago. So anybody that's been uh, you know, watching and following along, I appreciate your patience, but uh, I was making big, big updates to to my, my LaunchBox Big Box playlist, which was the big delay. And I have some better tools now, so it's better for me to, to to keep working on this now that I have some better tools. So it's a little bit definitely easier to get through many, many boards using the right tools. So um, yeah, check it out if you're interested. Yeah, yeah and if you joined a little bit late, uh, I did a demo earlier on. So I'm going to kind of post and leave that portion of the demo. But since I'm going to be working for the next hour, I'll just leave the stream on in case people have questions. Feel free to type any comments and chats, but you can just see me using my drill pass working on all these boards. So that's what I'm just going to be doing for the rest of the time. So what happened? My music didn't play. Where did my music go? Go. Play, play, play. How is the volume not on? Oh. Maybe my internet is too slow to play music and stream at the same time. Probably using a phone my bandwidth. <laughs> it's all right. Oh no, my camera. Oh, I'm glad I didn't do that on the real stream. Boom. All right, hopefully that's okay. Didn't break my camera.
oh no, my shop vac broke. This happened to me earlier when one of my fans got bent, and then I had to replace the whole shop vac. But ugh, this DeWalt shop vac, this, if there's one thing I wouldn't recommend, is a DeWalt shop vac, because this has broken twice on me already. Now I don't know if I can keep drilling because I don't have my shop back going on in the background. Dang it, that's gonna suck. All right, maybe I'll have to get a replacement shop back. Let me see if I can get another one. Let's see how messy it is without it. I wanna see how bad this gets. Let's see. This is gonna get super messy, so <laughs> I might cut off my uh, my stream here because my shop back has now gone kaput and I had to fix it. So drilling without a shop back gets really really messy. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm gonna cut off the stream now. Appreciate everybody joining, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.